Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome. It is time for day two of our Biz in Five series. I'm so excited. We had so many people on with us live yesterday. It was incredible. And you guys had such amazing questions. And I'm just so excited to be able to share with you virtual assistants. And today we're going to be talking about what you really need to get started as a VA. So Melanie is here with me and she mm-hmm. and my Hey, she and my whole team, we are, uh, they are answering questions in the chat. So feel free to make this as interactive as you guys want, ask questions, you know, share feedback. They're going to be, you know, really, really interactive in the chat. And then Melanie, if you guys do have questions that you want answered live, she's going to be taking note of those questions throughout the entire live stream training so that, you know, we can answer your questions live at the very end. So you ready to do this, Melanie? I'm so ready. ready. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and take her down here. And then I want to hear from you guys. What has stuck out to you the most so far in this training? Uh, Yesterday, was there anything that just really made you go, oh, this is like a big aha moment for me? If so, put it in the chat. I want to hear from you what really stood out to you or what action item potentially that you're going to take uh, based off of yesterday's training. Now, today's going to be really, really juicy. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, But I do want to remind you guys that uh, if you want access to all of the different trainings that we're doing here, you can go to the virtualsavvy.com slash bizin5. That way we can send you all of the updates when I'm going live each day. We can send you the replays and um, you will also be on that list to make sure that you are notified when we launch our Savvy System course this Friday. So yay, who's ready? Let's do this thing. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you here. Today is day two of our Biz in Five series, and we're talking all about what you really need to get started as a virtual assistant. And maybe some of you guys have heard like, oh, you know, you have to start a blog or you have to have this software. You have to be using this invoicing system. Well, we're going to really get into the nitty gritty of what you really need to get started and you might be surprised. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. So um, well, reminder, if you don't know who I am, my name is Abby Ashley. I'm the founder of The Virtual Savvy. Um, I just want to go ahead and preface that my my marketing team made these slides, and I think sometimes they do it just to embarrass me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So um, I have a family that I absolutely love. This is Jones. Um, this was, you know, a work from home day, and maybe this is what some of your work from home days look like. <laughs> um, he's my five-year-old little boy obsessed with Star Wars and Legos. I'm an amateur beatboxer, emphasis on the amateur. And uh, my team just wanted to note in there that one time a lizard died in my pants. So that's a story that I'll have to share with you. Maybe if you stay till the end of the live stream, you can be like, Abby, tell us the lizard in the pants story. And, uh, and <laughs> I can tell it to you. It's as bad as it sounds. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So um, what do you really need to get started as a VA? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, our, and then we will be doing a live Q&A. So make sure to have your um, your questions ready, be dropping them in the comments. My team will be grabbing your questions and we'll be saving them for the end. Melanie, our Savvy System Director is here and she will be grabbing those questions to be answering at the end of the live stream. And then if you stay till the very end, we like to do a little thing called the Be Bold Challenge. Since we are challenging you guys to be bold and start your own businesses, we're gonna do a little something to be bold as well. It's essentially another way for my team to embarrass me <laughs> live on camera. So let's do this thing. Let's Lesson two, we are here for day two. If you're ready for day two, go ahead and put day two in the comments. I'm ready. Um, What you really need to get started as a virtual assistant. So yesterday we talked all about what a VA really is. And we gave you that definition. I I told you a little bit of my backstory, how I discovered virtual assistants. But then we talked about, you know, these are the types of skills that you can offer as a virtual assistant. Here is what a VA is. When somebody says, what is a virtual assistant? How do you respond, right? Uh, Or maybe if you're just discovering it for yourself. 
Uh, we talked about how you can provide administrative, marketing, or technical services for brick or uh, brick and mortar or online businesses. We talked about how virtual assistants are independent contractors and how we love that independent contractor life, right? And we talked about uh, some of the different elements. And if you remember from yesterday, something that got you excited about being a virtual assistant, let me know that in the comments as well. But today, we're going to talk about do I actually have what it takes, right? And so maybe you heard yesterday and it got you pumped, right? Maybe you heard yesterday and you started feeling doubts of like, I don't know if I really can do this, right? Like, um, do I actually have the skills? Do I actually have the means, the time, the equipment, all of that? So that's why we decided to put this right here strategically in day two to talk about what you really need to become a VA. Now, we are going to talk practice a little bit, but this is not just a supplies list. Um, I can tout off some of my favorite, you know, my favorite software and things like that. And we, we've got plenty of time to talk about that in our Q&A time, if that's something you're interested in. But here's what I know. I could give you a list of the best software that you need to go run your VA business. But if you don't believe that you can do it, it doesn't matter, right? Like if you don't actually say, I have the skills, I am equipped, I can go out and market myself because I have the confidence that I can actually go help small business owners, then it won't matter if you have the best looking website or if you have, you know, the best tools on the market, right? So this is not a supplies list. However, we are going to talk practically too. I can't, I'm a very practical person, you'll see. So there'll be plenty of practical nuggets in here. So before we jump into that list of what it really takes to be a virtual assistant, I do want to remind you guys, this Friday, boo, 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 we are launching the Savvy System. We are only launching this course two times a year, okay? We launch in January, we launch in July. Every single year, we bring in two massive cohorts of students, and you guys come in together with so much momentum. It's amazing, honestly. You guys come in and you work through the Savvy System together. What is the Savvy System? It's our step-by-step -step course to teach you how to launch, grow, and scale your virtual assistant business. It's lifetime access. It's over 70 uh, lessons in 13 modules. It is guest experts. It is proposal reviews. It is exclusive job opportunities. It is everything you need to start your virtual assistant business with success. We're launching this Friday. We can talk about that more in the comments if you guys have more questions about it. So are you guys ready? Let's talk about what you would really need. If I was going to start a VA business today, if I was going to go back in time and say, okay, forget everything else. I'm going to start from scratch. What would I really need to get started? Here's what it is. All right. Number one, <laughs> I'm just going to start with the obvious. You guys are like, Abby, this, this training is really profound. No, trust me, it's going to get good. But I just want to, I, I want to actually share with you the simplicity. I actually talked with a friend yesterday, a good friend of mine who um, is a little unsure about her job, which is a sad thing that a lot of us are probably feeling right now. She's feeling like, I don't know how stable my job is. Abby, you've been telling me about virtual assistants for years. And she started shooting off questions. And one of the first questions she had was like, okay, but talk to me about kind of like the overhead, like what, what kind of software would I need? You know, what kind of hardware would I need? And I'm like, literally, you need a computer and decently fast internet. That is the only like, actual thing. Like if you were to strip everything else away, you really don't need all of the other fine, like shiny, fancy tools. There are obviously, there's great invoicing software out there. There are great project management systems, but so many of those things have free trials. Um, so many, like for instance, there's a, a software called Dubsado. Your first three clients are free. So literally when I'm saying I need to start right now my virtual assistant business, what do I need? What do I have to buy up front? 
nothing. We have had students literally walk to the library and use the library computer to start their business, right? Because when you have that motivation, you do what it takes to get started. So a computer and decently fast internet, obvious thing, but I have to say it. And I say the decently fast internet because who Lord knows I have been in places <laughs> where there's been no internet and I'm like, I can't do this. I cannot work. So those, those would be two. <laughs> Uh, those would be two things that I would say for just starting out, right? Uh, number two, and I feel like this is, man, this one is so important. And yes, I made up a word to make my point, but you're going to get it. An element of figure it out idness. okay? Here's the thing, guys. You are not going to know everything there is to know when you're first getting started. Um, I, I saw this quote by this girl I follow on Instagram. She was saying, allow yourself the dignity to be a beginner. And whew, that was that was so like that I, I really resonated with that because just like anything you've ever started, right? Um, anything that you have ever, ever gone to be gone on to be really, really great at? Are you great at running? Are you great at cooking? Are you great at painting? Whatever it may be, you didn't start that way, right? But there was something in you that said, I, I'm going to figure this out. And if you're the kind of person, and, and we're going to talk real today, it's okay if I'm real with you guys. If you're the kind of person that you start doing something and you and if you're not, uh, you don't understand it right away, you're like, eh, whatever, I'm just not going to get it. This probably isn't for you because you're going to come across things. Your client is going to ask you, hey, do you know the software? And you need to be able to say, I don't. But, you know, I'm a fast learner and I can figure it out. Or, hey, have you ever heard, have you heard of this new theory? No, but let me look it up and check it out, right? And that element, that curiosity, I think is one of the elements when we talk about the people who make it and the people who don't, that curiosity and that element of like, I'm going to figure this out. Like, who are the figure it out people? Like, oh, I'm going to sit here until I get this. Um, those people do really, really well in their virtual assistant businesses. Okay. So an element of figure it outedness. I hope you like my made up word. I love this quote, Jim Ron. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse, right? And I found that, trust me, guys, this is not saying, you know, one of our core values here is action over perfection. And I think that even in, um, even in your, what am I trying to say? Even in your momentum, even in your motivation, it's not always going to be perfect. Okay. So even in the, like, I'm just sitting here saying like, I have found plenty of times to have an excuse for not going to that networking event or for not, you know, working a little bit later on my business or for whatever. Right. Like, there are times where your motivation will will ebb and flow and that's okay. Like really, it's okay and it's okay to rest, by the way. Um, but in general, if you wanna do something, you will find a way to do it, right? And we found that, it, I found that in my own life when I, I can say something's important to me and I can show that it's important to me by how much time it actually takes on my computer or, or, or the money that I put into it. Or there's different categories that it's like, man, th this is important and I will find a way to do this thing because it's that important to me. So the next thing, and we kind of alluded to this a little bit, but I want to really bring it home to get over not knowing it all. Do we have any perfectionists here? Anybody with me? Let's keep it real. Um, this, this idea that I need to have a working knowledge of every single system, of every single piece of software, of every service that's out there, that I need to know it all before I get started will halt you. It, it, it has the potential to destroy your business, honestly. If you have to know everything before you take that first step, then you're not going to be able to take very many steps, right? So this idea, um, again, we call it action over perfection. Um, it's 
it's this idea that I don't know it all, but I know enough to take my next step, right? And I feel like this is a very, very key characteristic that you'll need to have or that you'll need to embrace at least if you don't have it um, in virtual assistants. It's one of the reasons. So here at the Virtual Savvy, we have two separate programs um, for, for people just getting started in their virtual assistant business. One's called the Savvy System. We already talked about it. It launches this Friday. It's our step-by-step -step system for starting your virtual assistant business from scratch. We also have a, a second um, program that's called Savvy Vault. It's amazing. Um, it's essentially a vault of over 60 tech and industry training. So Canva, ConvertKit, MailChimp, um, you know, how to run Facebook ads, how to set up an Amazon store, how to do, 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 do you know, 60 plus tech and industry trainings, right? You can buy them both at the same time. You could buy one, you could buy the other, but I always, and it's, it's, we literally say it in the very beginning of the Savvy Vault where we're like, listen, watch this first. If you feel like you need to watch all these lessons and master all of these tools before you get started, you shouldn't be a part of Savvy Vault right now because it is one of the things it, I think that sometimes we put it on as like this badge of like, I'm going to learn everything there is to learn when in reality, we're just using that as a shield, not to, we're using it as a shield so that we don't have to face our fear of actually marketing. Okay. Oh, am I stepping on some toes here? Some of us use our consumption of knowledge and feeling like we have to know it all because we're actually scared of getting out there and telling people about our business. And that is, it's reality. Okay. I get it. I've been there. Right. And again, knowledge and curiosity, all of those are very, very good things. You need to have them. But what is stopping you from getting out there and reaching your why? I have a feeling that your why is related to you actually making money in your business. And you need to get clients to make money and you need to market yourself to get clients, right? And so if you are waiting to figure it all out, if you're waiting to know it all before you take that leap, then we need to stop it. All right. Am I stepping on toes today? I feel like I'm in a stepping on toes kind of mood today. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, Aletta says, okay, tears, go away. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all of us. Let me just tell you, if I'm talking to you, the only reason that I know to talk to you about this stuff is because I have experienced it myself. These are literally the things that I had to get over before I was able to just get out there and get clients, okay? So let's keep going. You guys ready? Ready for more tough love? <laughs> it's a tough love kind of day. I love it. I'm like, I, um, I have... Um, I have a coach, like a, and she's an Enneagram coach, actually. She's amazing. And I'm always like, just give it to, just give me, I need the truth. Come on. <laughs> just, you know, maybe make it hurt so good. Um, all right. So to be okay with releasing a non-polished product, this is similar, but I want to really talk to the people who need things to visually look really, really well. Okay. So for those of us who are like, I will start telling people about my business when I get those business cards in or when I finish my logo or when I finish my website, I would really like to challenge you to be okay with releasing a non polished, a non perfect product. Okay. Um, and this could be, it, it can be non visually too. Maybe you're just like, Oh, I don't know if my packages are a hundred percent, right? I don't know if I've got it a hundred percent, right? <sighs> Breathe. One of the things that I like to say is everything is a draft one, right? Everything is a draft. So, um, when I create slides, it's, it's my draft one, right? When I create my packages, this is my first draft of my packages, right? And it's okay to launch with a draft, with a working draft, right? Knowing that, hey, in two weeks, I may tweak my packages a little bit, or man, my website isn't 100% what I want it to look like, but that's okay. I can go ahead and release it to the world and know that I can go, um, I can keep going 
of working on it bit by bit and making it better as I see things, right? When we don't do this, what, haps, what happens is we get stuck in that perfectionist trap where we think, oh, it has to, it needs to look like this. And I really want you to step back and ask yourself why. Do you actually think that because, you know, your logo is sitting here instead of here, that that is going to completely disqualify you from all clients who want to work with you? No, um, it, it, it it's not. And I this is not saying that I don't value excellence. Like I put a big emphasis on excellence. I think that we need to do the best that we can at all times. I'm talking to the people who get, again, stuck because of their perfectionistic tendencies, because we're just like, oh, it just needs to be a little bit better before I can X, Y, Z. We have to come to grips in business with releasing a non-polished product. Um, did anybody see like when the Tesla truck came out and they're like, look, it has bulletproof windows and then bash and the, the windows totally like broke. It was so like sad and kind of funny. And I feel like so representative of business. And I'm like, good for you, Tesla. You released a non-polished product. And you know what? Sales of that truck are still doing just fine, right? You have to keep moving forward, even when things aren't perfect, even when mistakes happen, even when the windows crash, right? You have to keep moving forward and accepting man, I, I'm going to accept the fact that not everything's going to be polished, not everything is going to be perfect, is going to help you move forward, not only in like the things you're trying to perfect right now, but it's also going to help you move forward when things go wrong, when you send that accidental email to that client, when you put the wrong name on a on a document, right? It, those things that you, you're not trying to not be excellent, right? You're just, you, you make mistakes and everyone is going to make human errors and that's okay. And realizing that it's okay when I make those mistakes is going to help you move forward when they happen. All right. All right. Good. <laughs> um, releasing an MVP. That's right. Yep. Yep. Just that that beginning, that, that MVP product, right? This is This is my first draft. Um, something else that you really need, let's get a little practical again here. Um, time to commit to the business. So um, just talk reality. If you're going to launch a business, it's going to take time, right? Um, and saying yes to one thing is generally um, saying no to something else. And so there's going to be things in your life that you're going to have to realize, what am I saying no to, right? A few weeks ago, we did a live stream about facing objections when talking to a friend or a family member, uh, like potentially a spouse about starting your new business. It's a really, really great live stream if you want to go back and watch it. Um, but we talked about, you know, actually pre-thinking of what some of their concerns would be and what somebody's concern, whether it's a friend, a spouse, family member may say like, oh, man, isn't this going to take a lot of time away from X, Y, Z? And I think a lot of times we just get so excited about an idea that we don't actually think through, well, where is this time going to come from? Or where is this money going to come from? Or where is this whatever, this extra margin going to come from? And so um, for you, you have to really look at, all right, this is going to take extra time. In general, we say here at the Virtual Savvy, if you're going to start a new virtual assistant business, you need at the bare minimum five hours of devoted time, not distracted time to your business. The difference to, of dis, the difference between devoted time and distracted time. Distracted time is when my kids are in here pulling on my shirt, asking me for orange juice, right? Um, devoted time is when it is quiet. I'm able to focus. It's at the time of day that I can focus. It's in the environment that I can focus and I can get some real deep work done. So do you have five hours of devoted time at the bare minimum that you can work on your business? If the answer is yes, awesome. Go ahead and carve out that time and, and designate it to working on your business. If the answer is no, that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, this isn't for me, right? You have to take an honest look at your calendar, an honest look at your schedule, your life right now, and say, is there any way that I can make this happen? Again, if we 
want something to happen? Are we going to make it, find a way? Or are we going to find an excuse? Um, and for some of us, it isn't the right season. And I think it's okay to acknowledge that as well. Right. Um, but for some of us, we can figure it out um, if we can shift some things. So here's actually something that I want you guys to take action on. I think that um, and people are asking in the comments, five hours a day or a week, I would say at the minimum five hours a week. Okay. So that could be an hour a day, Monday through Friday. Um, and I'm talking about if you're just wanting to get this business started off the ground, you're going to need that up front to really make an impact. If you're working with clients, um, you would need at least that much time to sell like one good package to somebody. Okay. Um, and that could go up that could go up to as many hours as you want to work, right? Um, but usually I've seen anybody who are like, I can do this for like an hour a week, it just doesn't work as well. So um, take action. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to actually put this time in your calendar. These five hours, it could be 10, it could be 20, whatever you decide for your wherever you're at in life right now. I want to see it on your calendar. So I use Google Calendar. Um, it took me a while. Honestly, I was a paper calendar person forever. Uh, but I finally switched to Google Calendar because I liked the way that I could block out um, my time there and see a whole week view really, really easily. Um, but maybe you're a paper calendar person. Maybe you're a what's a calendar person. And if you're a what's a calendar person, then um, it, it's time to it's time to start planning out your calendar. And you can literally just take a piece of paper if you don't have a calendar if you're a what's a calendar did you guys get that what's a calendar um, <laughs> if you're a if you don't use a calendar then get just a blank piece of paper right write Sunday through Saturday and start to write in the big blocks the things that you know have to happen right okay I take my kids to school or so you know my son takes a nap or this or that like and and an ideal week it's not going to be every single week that's like this okay here's what generally happens in a normal week in this general normal week when are the times that I'm actually going to work on my business when are the times that I'm going to carve out and have devoted not distracted time so I want to see this um, you guys can put it in your calendar you can take a screenshot out at tag me on Instagram hit me up on Facebook um, just comment in the uh, below with a picture whatever it is I'm at the virtual savvy on Instagram if you want to just tag me there that's probably the easiest thing to do um, but let me see your calendar I want to see when you're carving out this time. And this is an action item that you can go ahead and take now to start committing to your business. Because again, if you don't have time to work on your business, you're not going to be able to move forward. You're not going to actually um, make that progress. So um, here is what we're talking about tomorrow, guys, the three most common mistakes that people make when starting a VA business. Um, it's going to be a really, really good discussion. If you thought I stepped on toes today, whoo, wait until tomorrow. Um, it's going to be really good. You know, we have trained thousands of students to start grow, scale their own virtual assistant businesses. Um, in reality, not every single person who starts a VA business follows through. Not every single person makes it. But there are people who do. In fact, the, the majority of people who at least go through like our program are succeeding, are finding clients, are, you know, taking the steps. So what's the difference? What's the difference between the people who succeed in starting virtual assistant businesses and the people who kind of, uh, they trail off, they end up, you know, eh, maybe this isn't for me, maybe I want to do something else, right? What is the difference between these two people? That's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. It's going to be real good. So um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a Q&A time. Before that, I want to mention one more time, we launch our Savvy System course this Friday. If you're not on the wait list, get on the wait list. Um, you can go do that at thesavvysystem.com. The reason why you want to be on the wait list is because on Friday, we will be releasing a coupon code that gets you up to $300 and savings off the cost of the course. Okay. So we're going to give you a coupon code and it's only good for that Friday through Monday. So you're going to want, if you are planning to join the savvy system for this launch, again, we don't launch until January. So if you are wanting to launch, um, if you are wanting to join for this 
uh, cohort, then you, um, you'll you want that discount code because that's just going to save you a lot of money. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and let's do a Q&A time. I know that Melanie and the team have been collecting questions. You guys have been asking questions like crazy in the comments. Thank you for being so interactive. I love this. Um, ah, so, so much fun. I'm going to go ahead and bring Melanie on here and we're going to see what questions you guys had. Hey, Melanie. Hey everyone. There's some really good questions today. Oh, oh my gosh. So excited. Let's jump in. We've got a so, good uh, time for questions. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm actually going to read something else. I think this is a theme this week because you guys have so many amazing things to say, but Sarah says, you'll never move forward. If you wait to know everything, you'll never know everything, no matter how long you wait. Oh, that was that's so good. <laughs> that was so good. We had to share that one. Uh, and oh. Christine and a couple other people wanted us to clarify for your business. Do you need five hours a day or five hours a week? Yeah. So five, I would say at the minimum five hours a week. And guys, that's not a rule. Like that's not, that's literally just, you know, I have seen the people who don't have enough time to commit to their business. If they're just doing this for an hour or two a week, it just, in my opinion, it doesn't feel like enough to really get traction. And if that's how much time you've committed to your business, then once you start getting clients, you really don't have that much time to really be working on their businesses either. So that's why I would say, you know, at least uh, five hours a week. That could be that you're taking a massive chunk on Saturday, right? Like you just, you work all day Saturday and that's it. Uh, maybe you're waking up one hour earlier, Monday through Friday. Maybe, you know, you've got a two hour slot on Friday and then three hours every Monday, you ask your mom to watch the kids or you do a babysitting swap with somebody else, you know, or I'll watch your kids Thursday. You watch my kids Monday, right? Um, whatever it means for you, where you're able to carve out that time and make it happen. Um, that that's what you need to do. Awesome. And Vanessa has a related question to that. Says the time uh, that you're referring to, is that the time to work on your business or time for clients? That's a great question. So in the very beginning, um, most of us aren't going to have a client on day one. So I'm saying total time. This is business time. <laughs> um, so this is time to work on my business, but eventually that will transition to client time as well. Um, so if you were working, let's say you set aside five hours a week to work on your business, okay? I would probably say, and these are really, this is really general, once you start getting clients, to be fully booked is probably about four hours a week for you if that's all you've set aside to work on your business. And that's fine, right? Um, that'd be like 150, if you were doing $30 an hour, that'd be $150 a week, uh, right? <laughs> $120, I'm really bad at math. <laughs> yeah, $120 a week. So that'd be what, $480 a month that you're making by, you know, by working an hour a day, like five days a week. That's not terrible, right? Uh, especially working on our own time in our pajamas during our kids' nap time. Like that could really help the right person. And so it really depends. So um, as in the very beginning, there's a lot of setup things that you're gonna need to do for your business. You're gonna have to choose your packages, choose your rate, list out your services. Um, if you don't do a website, then we we teach you how to do like this, this PDF document that you can send, um, you know, how to do proposals you're going to be marketing more in the beginning. Um, the cool thing about marketing, and we're going to talk all about marketing on Friday. So just be ready for Friday's live stream. It's going to be really, really good. But the thing about marketing is that it takes a lot of time in the beginning. And just when you get really, really good at it, you usually don't have to market anymore. <laughs> Like, seriously, if you ask anyone who's been in, oh, in the VA business for like a year or two, you're like, where do you get most of your clients? Where do you market? And they're like, oh, no, I don't market. I just get referrals, right? <laughs> do a uh -huh. really great job for your clients, um, then word will travel, okay? So I'm just saying, um, like, at the beginning, it is more working kind of like on your business, um, like the, the things for your business. As you get clients, some of that time will be replaced. So, so true. And and I'm going to go ahead and answer this uh, question for Donna. Um, so she's asking what type of cost is affiliated. And I have all of the updated pricing right here. We have our... <laughs> we didn't answer that question very good yesterday. 
Yes. So the savvy system, it, um, the basic savvy system is uh, $14.97 paid in full or 12 payments of $147. We also have the ultimate savvy system, which also includes lifetime access to the savvy vault, which is all the tech trainings to advance your skills as a, as a virtual assistant. And that's $29.97 or 12 payments of $2. 97. And, and I'm going to also answer Vanessa's question. The discount code does also work on the payment plan. Yep. Yep. And so those prices aren't including the discount code. So you'll get, I think it is like a 10% off, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 10% off of $29.97 is about $300 off. So um, yeah, it's a really, really good discount code that you'll get this, uh, this Friday, if you join during our early bird weekend. So yeah. thank you for that information, Melanie. Of course. And Tanya says, I can't make it tomorrow. Where will the video replays for this be again? Yeah, no problem. So if you just go on our Facebook page, just um, the uh, facebook.com slash the virtual savvy, you can see all of them there. Um, they're also on our YouTube channel, or um, actually each one of the days you can just do like the virtual savvy.com slash day one. Um, it's it's spelled out O N E or the virtual savvy.com slash day two, virtual savvy.com slash day three. Um, and you can see each of them there too. Awesome. And Elizabeth wants to know, can you use an iPad instead of a computer to start your business? Great question. Um, I feel like it would be fairly difficult um, only because I've, you know, I have an iPad. Um, there's a lot of things that I do enjoy using it for. Uh, but for me, a lot of what you need to do when you're first starting out is um, like a lot of there will be like some some typing, some documents. There's um, there's software that we recommend that just it works okay on an iPad, but just not as well. If you have one of those that has a keyboard, then I think that you know for sure it, it definitely can work. Um, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. So that's a great question. Um, it it's possible. I just think that once you kind of get started and get your first client, it would probably, I would like go ahead and get ready for it to be one of the first things that you invest in. For instance, you know, we teach a program called Canva. Canva has an app. Um, you can use it on a tablet, but it's just, it's just not as easy um, as a, la a laptop's fine, a, a desktop. Um, again, it may be something where you like go to the library for an hour, you know, five days a week or something like that. Um, but it is, it is a little bit more difficult in my opinion on a tablet. I agree. And I, and I, when I first started my business, there were a couple times I tried to go mobile on my iPad working on my portfolio. And let me just say, it probably took about twice as long to even get through a portion of it. I was like, okay, I need to invest in a laptop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, okay. So somebody asked, what if the business owner doesn't want to work with me if I say that I'll figure it out as I go? Sorry, can you, it's cut out a little bit for me. Can you say it? Oh, no problem. So, um, so somebody says, what if the business owner doesn't want to work with me? Um, because I say that I'm going to be figuring it out as I go. Oh, that's a great question. I, I would definitely not use that particular language when talking to clients. <laughs> um, what I would, so here's the thing. Whenever you start your business, you're going to be choosing your services. The services that you choose, you need to be confident in, okay? Well, if you And that means that it's okay if you have a small list of services. So if you're like, I can do, and, and we teach you general admin inside of the Savvy system. We teach you how to do customer service and, you know, simple things like data entry and, you know, like there's, there's things that maybe that you've done at a previous job that you're like, I feel good about these services. That's what you need to list as your services. So that's not a figure it out as I go mentality. What I'm saying as far as figure it out, uh, that figure it out is, you know, for you and yourself, you're going to come across things even in your own business, maybe not even for clients where you're like, man, I really, you know, I, I'd love to set up a, you know, um, a way to get clients on LinkedIn. Okay, well, it's going to cause you, you're going to have to, if you don't 
don't have a LinkedIn profile, you're going to have to be able to dig in and figure out how do I make a good LinkedIn profile? How do I do this? And a lot of times we'll give you templates for things, LinkedIn in specific, you know, we give you a template of how to do LinkedIn well, but there's still that element of you're going to have to be the one going in and figuring it out. So that's the figure it out in this that I was focusing on in general, there is an element of when working with clients, there will be times where a client may ask you, you know, hey, I would love if you could also X, Y, Z. Now, depending on where you are at in your business, you may know yourself well enough to be like, no, honestly, that is beyond my scope of work. That's not something I'm interested in doing. And that's okay to say that. But if that's something you want to learn, what an opportunity, right? Some people, you know, they will begin working with clients and then the client will say, hey, um, like, how would you feel about maybe managing my Pinterest? And you can say, you know, I I actually haven't done that before, but I'm a fast learner and I'm actually, you know, have been studying some articles on Pinterest or I've been, I've been taking this little mini course on Pinterest. Um, so I'd love to get in there and, and, and figure it out, right? And I think that that is more the approach that we're looking at. Um, with if there is something because the cool thing is is that sometimes clients will actually like pay you to take over the things that they're doing um and you almost get like on the job training because you're learning by experience of doing this new thing um but i do think you need to be honest about like hey no i haven't done this before um but that's something that i'm interested in learning so i'm a fast learner so let's do this thing right i think that that environment uh, or that wording is probably better for for that type of situation yeah, that's, that's so, so good. And April wants to know, how do you know when you're ready? Like how much knowledge and different skills um, do I need to get started? I think you're ready right now. <laughs> no, but seriously, most of us, it is not a matter of skill if we're ready. You know, most watching here have been in the digital age long enough that we know uh, and that's that figure it outedness that I'm talking about that like, you know, I can do my basic services and most of the things I don't know, I can learn through Abby's trainings, through looking it up on Google or YouTube, right? Like, like, are, are you just the kind of person that's just like, I'm scrappy and I'm going to figure this out, right? I think that like that element really, really um, can help you along the way if you don't feel 100% prepared. Um, so that's why I love anything that I do now, literally anything. I'm, I'm a big investor in online courses because I love following a blue print. I love being able to be like, okay, I need to create a logo or I need to buy a logo, which whatever one I decide to do, right? Uh, here's how to do this. Here's how to do this. Boom. Done. What's next? Okay. Now I need to, you know, come up with my packages and pricing. Okay. How do I do it? Boom. Okay. What's next, you know? And so, um, I'm a big fan of following a blueprint um, in order to launch whatever it is that I'm launching. Um, you know, that's that's what we do here. If we want to, at the Virgil Savvy, we want to learn to run Facebook ads. All right, let's 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 invest in a Facebook ad course. Or we want to learn how to do this. Let's do this. Like, let's actually invest in the thing and get a step-by-step -step blueprint so I'm not reinventing the wheel myself. Yeah, that's so, so true. Um now, Kina says, and I hope I said your name correctly, is there a two payment plan option in both programs? Um, there is not a two payment plan, but what you can do um, if you if you end up purchasing, if you guys end up joining the Savvy system on Friday or, you know, it'll the card will be open for two weeks. If you end up doing the payment plan, if you want to pay that off early, by all means, you can. In fact, um, this was like insider secret. I probably shouldn't be telling everyone live. But if you choose the payment plan um, and you pay it off in the first six months, you actually, we will let you pay it off at the pay in full price. So um, that's a huge advantage as well. We we want you guys to, I mean, that's a huge goal for so many people. So many of our students come in and they're like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a client to pay off the savvy system within the first month or within the first three months. Right. And they make that a goal and then they do it and they're like, yes, goal achieved. Now everything else is just pure income. Right. And so um, that's really exciting for them. And what's cool is that even after you've paid it off, um, you still get lifetime access to the course and the community and the job opportunities and everything that comes along with it. So it's pretty awesome. 
Definitely. And uh, Janina says, this is my struggle being, being a married woman, have a two year old working a nine to five. Where do I find the time? Mm, so good. I, I get it. And you are in the place of so many of our students. And I think that it's that, you know, um, we do this little project called the ideal week. And it's just like, if, if you like your schedule isn't always the same and I get that, but most weeks, what does your week look like? And really carve it out and, and lay it out. Sometimes I just get a blank white piece of paper and divide it into these seven columns, Sunday through Saturday, right? What does my week actually look at? And when you're looking at it on paper, when you're living it, it feels overwhelming. And I get that. And I don't want to discredit like my mom was a single mom raising three kids, working her booty off, like to do everything for us. So like, I get it. Um, and, and it feels really overwhelming when you're living it. But when you put it on paper, a lot of times you're like, okay, I, I can do some things here. Right. And you start thinking through what are some of the resources that I have. And I think acknowledging too, that, you know, um, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Melanie, you can expand on this if you want, but like, um, recognizing seasons in your life too, like, is this the season that you're able to put in that extra, Who it's going to take a lot. Right. And like, and knowing like, this is a season, but I'm working towards something really, really great. So I can move out of this season. Do you want to speak any more to that, Melanie? Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm also a single mom. And when I, um, before I, you know, was the savvy system director here at the virtual savvy, I also started a virtual assistant business while I worked in, in office, um, in office nine to five job, usually longer than that. And there was a season, there was a good, you know, period of time that I was hustling on my lunch breaks in the morning after my my kiddo went to sleep it was there was a, a a period of time that it was a lot of work but as long as you can be intentional about that time that like okay if I'm for example uh, you know we tell our students in the savvy system you know you have so many courses to work through maybe set a goal that today I'm gonna get through this module and I'm gonna get these assignments done and then be really intentional about those time blocks that you do have because you know it, it it does take that intentionality and that sacrifice during that season to make it happen but if you can if you can sacrifice a little bit for your long-term goal it is so worth it in the end yeah and i think that's when we talk about like devoted time versus distracted time that's not just for you and for your productivity for those of you with kids that's for your kids too i know like for me, so my kids are five and seven and they know mom works and mom works hard and mom works. I mean, I, I work, you know, probably about 30 hours a week and in the summer they, they know mom's working at these times and da, 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 da. But like when I'm working, I am working. And when I'm mom, I am mom. And like the computer is closed and I am be able, I'm be able to have devoted, not distracted time with them as well. And I think that, you know, making sure that you have that time that when it is with your kids that you can just be like as fully present as possible with them we don't get it perfect all the time trust me I know I don't um but like I can, I'm going to be fully present with them here and then when I work on my business I'm going to try to be fully present and we do the best we can with that um giving ourselves grace along the way as well Definitely. And just to expand on that just a little bit more, uh, you know, when those intentional times with, you know, work and with your family, that we have to keep our, our why in mind while we're during these seasons. And when we're, you know, have those time blocks with what we're focusing on work or family, because we're, if you have kids, most of the time, they're a huge part of your why. I'm not, maybe not all of us, but most of the time that's the case. And so, you know, we can, we have to remember when we're up late and we're working on trying to find clients or when we're, you know, have those pockets of time with our kids, but you're like, Oh, but I should really be working on this. We have to remember our why during all of, all of the things that we do. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, now Tina says, how long is the program? How many months do we have access to it? Great question. So we have designed the course to, in essence, be a year long program. 
Um, and I say it that way because <laughs> here's here, that's like that's like the sales page answer. That's the textbook answer. Here's the real answer. Okay, <laughs> I told you we're being we're being real on on today's live stream. The real answer is that a lot of our students end up getting in the course and getting clients um, and get so busy with their client work that they don't actually finish the course. Um, or they're, it's like a year and a half later, they're like, okay, I'm finally getting to this lesson, you know? Like, I mean, there's people who literally will sell out their services and never even get to the website lesson. They're like, I, I completely sold out and I don't even, I still don't even have a website and I'm just now starting to get to the website lesson. And we're like, that's awesome. And that's one of the reasons, you know, I've been literally instructed by coaches to like, to take away lifetime access. They're like, Abby, that it's literally like it's too generous, which sounds silly, but it's like, but we're like, no, you don't get it. Like the, the community that's inside of this course is amazing. And we, you are with people in the community that have been in the community since 2016, when we launched this thing that now have multiple six figure businesses that are now, you know, have teams of people working for them and they're still active in the community. Right. And they're still giving feedback to other people. And here's what worked for me. And I'm like, we just can't take that away. Like it's too good. It's too rich. It's too, um, amazing. And so that's why, you know, you, we say, Hey, like you can, if, if you were to like really commit to the course and say, I'm going to finish this thing, we're saying it would probably take you a whole year to finish it just because there's so much implementation and it's over 70 lessons, every single one of them with homework assignments. Um, so you literally have like a, here's what I do all the time. But if you need to take a break for whatever reason, for life circumstance reasons, or because your business is just growing too fast, which actually happens a lot, um, then then that's fine because you can stop and just pick up where where you go from there. Absolutely. And and I'm also going to add on to the community part, too, because that's my favorite part. Um, now, the, our community is amazing. And included in the community, we also have uh, weekly coaching calls and accountability calls. And it's not just a community where you can come and ask questions, which is a huge part of it. But also, you, it's, a, it's a lot of hands on from our team. You're, you know, we have uh, we, we're, we're all friends. We, you know, we call each other the savvy family because we want to know what's going on, you know, in your business. And we have people that attend our weekly calls and we're like, Hey, keep us updated on this and tag us. And then we check in and it's really, really amazing. The bonds that are created in that community, not just with it, with our students, but also with our staff. And it's re it's a really, really special place. Yeah. And what's really cool too, is that our, um, our, I just noticed this from the comments, our team is actually mapped out. Okay. How much, how much time does actually just watching the lessons, how much time do the assignments? And so we have calculated that it takes about, and I, I'll post Katie's comment here. It takes about 20 hours to launch your business. Our average student launches within four weeks of starting the course. So you can see, so 20 hours, I mean, there are people that literally launch their business in the very first week because they just put their head down and bust through those assignments, right? There are people who are working full-time jobs who are, you know, doing other things and, but they've committed that five hours a week. And so within the first, um, you know, four weeks within that first month, they're able to launch. So it really depends. It's a self-paced program. So it really depends on the speed that you wish to go through the assignments. Yep. So, so true. And Phyllis says, what do you think about platforms like Upwork and Fiverr? Um, there's a definite strategy that you can use. There are things that I don't prefer about platforms like that. Um, I don't like the race to the bottom dollar mentality. I don't like that. Um, you know, there are so many undervalued, underpaid people that feel like it's okay to pay people those rates on those platforms. Um, and I could go on a whole tirade. We're actually building a new platform um, uh, within the next year. You'll hear about it. I'm very excited for it. Um, that's going to be more relationship based and cultural fit instead of like, oh, can you get this done for me as cheap as possible? Um, so with that said, 
<laughs> there is a way from a VA standpoint, like some people go and they post really incredible jobs there because there just aren't other places to post. So we do teach inside of our course how to find jobs on places like Upwork and Fiverr. Um, I mean, one of just just free tip for you. One of the things you can do when looking at jobs, um, particularly on Upwork, you can you can sort jobs by one, two or three dollar signs. Um, and so you can select only the three dollar signs, which means this is somebody who's saying I am willing to pay more for somebody who really knows what they're doing here. And people will even post like general admin tasks under those $3 signs. And so um, that's one of the strategies for Upwork. Um, and we go into it in more detail, but that's something, um, there. there is a way to find jobs on there, really good quality jobs. Okay, awesome. And we have some questions about um, what we're going to be talking about in the coming days. Rox wants to know, will, what, uh, will we be talking about contracts and packages? And Veronica wants to know what day we talk about business bank accounts, picking our name, all of the above. So um, there's so, so much. I mean, like I said, our course is 72 lessons. So we could talk about a lot of things. Um, and some of the things we can talk about here, um, you know, in our Q&A, a time as well. Um, we're going to talk a lot about marketing on Friday. Um, and a little bit, I'm going to share with you some examples of um, different pricing and packaging strategies on Friday as well. Friday's the, the entire presentation, my presentations have been 20 to 30 minutes. The presentation itself is about an hour on Friday. Um, so you might want to you know, have a little bit extra time carved out for Friday's presentation. Um, but it so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about packages and pricing and marketing all on Friday. Um, the contracts. So uh, I don't have a presentation here on contracts. We have a whole lesson in the savvy system. Um, just my short version, if you're just wanting my opinion on contracts, have a contract, always have a contract, always, 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 always have a contract and have a good contract. It doesn't have to come from the virtual savvy. We do have one for sale on our website, virtual savvy.com slash store. You'll find it. Um, it was created by an attorney specifically for virtual assistants. So um, have a contract, understand your contract, know what it says, know if it's if it protects you. I've I've been in a situation from a bad contract and it and you just don't want to be in that situation, okay? And so um just make sure you have a good contract. One of the things in the savvy system is that you get access, we give you our contract, um but we actually the the attorney who created the contract has agreed for our students that if you want to ask questions about the contract, then you can ask her those questions at any time. Now you can't ask for any free legal advice, but you literally have access to attorney to ask contract questions at any time. So like the, the amount that's like ridiculous, we just pay her a monthly stipend to provide that service for you guys. So it's pretty incredible. Definitely. And Whitney has a really good question. So she wants to know if the program gets updated with new information. She notices that some other programs are not always as updated. Great question. So yes, so we have a, it's one of those things that like I, uh, um, you know, we put a lot into this. So if you guys don't know the virtual savvy, we're, we're a fairly large business. Um, I'm pretty sure we're the largest VA training company. We have 20 full-time employees. Um, we have, you know, we have thousands of students who go through our program. We have a full-time team devoted to the course, to updating our trainings, to all of that. So um, with that said, we are continually updating. We are continually adding more information. Um, literally just this week, my team posted, and now we've added a workbook to, to our savvy system that our students can go through. It's going to be available pretty soon. It's gorgeous, by the way. Um, we have like, there's so many incredible things that we're like, oh, what would make it better? And we ask our students too. Like we send you guys surveys. What would make this even better? And so we're constantly tweaking and adding. We did a huge revamp of the course. What was it like two years ago? Um, to like the savvy system. A lot of the basic structure is the same, right? Um, but you know, once we teach you how to do a, a website on Squarespace, guess what? 
Squarespace changed. They did a huge update about a year ago and our team was like, all right, Squarespace changed. It's time to update the training. And so that's what we did. So, um, so yes, we are continually updating it. And, and one of the advantages we have is that we have a massive team of people that's able to, you know, devote the time to make those updates. So, so perfectly said, Abby. And Tina says, are the coaching calls one-on-one -on -one or small groups? And Oh, go ahead. You should answer this. I'm Melanie's the say, say, director. <laughs> the one that leads these. So I can speak to them. So uh, every we have uh, four different standing sort of calls every month. The first way is the first Wednesday, Wednesday of every month is our accountability call. And it's a Zoom call where you actually get to connect with other students and talk with each other about what's going on um, while also getting support from uh, me and the virtual savvy team. There's uh, the second Wednesday of every, every month, we have our critique calls where our students are able to submit what they're working on in their business, whether it be a portfolio, a website, a their social media platforms. And we give live feedback inside of the group on, on the areas that you can improve and also some areas of strength too. Um, our, the third Wednesday of every month, we have open office hours, which is more of a small, um, a small group coaching session where you can come and hang out. And it's really just us hanging out and you can get support in areas that you need in your business. And then um, the fourth Wednesday of every month, we have a spotlight call. So we'll highlight our students, we'll deep dive on topics. And then we also do hot seats where students can bring up really hot topics uh, in their business. And then we dive into what, what an action plan is that they can have moving forward. So they're really, they're, there's different kinds. There's small groups, there's, uh, there's live feedback, but then there's also one-on-one -on -one support inside of the community where we're always in there every day commenting, giving feedback, and not just from us, but also other students too. Just, just so much support there. Yeah, it's a really great community. I love it so much. Me too. <laughs> Um, Abby, how many, how many more questions do you say that we have? I here? know guys. So um, <laughs> I do want to value you guys this time. Um, I know there's still more questions in the comments. My team is going to keep going through and answering as many questions as we can. We're going to do another Q and a time after tomorrow's live stream. So if we didn't answer your question today, um, trust me, we are going to get to more questions. We're trying to answer different types of questions, um, every day also. So, um, and if you, if there's a question that you're like, Abby, I have to know this. I just really, really have to. You can also email us at hello at the virtual savvy.com. Um, but my team is going to go through and try to answer as many questions as we can here in the comments. Um, but we are going to go ahead and jump off of today's live stream. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a lot of fun. Um, and we want to end off with our Be Bold Challenge because, of course, um, you know, we're trying challenging you guys to be bold. So we need to take action and be bold ourselves. So I, I'm always interested. 260 of you stayed on to watch me embarrass myself. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Yesterday, we saw Melanie beatbox, which was super fun. Let's see what the be bold challenge is going to be today. Uh, we heard you can do five face tricks. Prove it. Oh, so my team puts these on here, and I have no idea what they're going to put. So um, so yes, I can do I can do five tricks just with my face. Do you guys want to see them? This is not going to be attractive or even really um, impressive. So <laughs> I just have to warn you. All right, I'll save the best one for last. Okay, trick number one. Uh, you probably won't even be able to see it, but I can wiggle my ears. Ready? Oh, I can. I think the earrings help. You can see. I, okay, I can, can wiggle my ears. Open? That's, awesome. <laughs> That's number one. Um, number two, I can. What else can I do? I can. I can lift one eyebrow. Is that is that a stupid human trick? I don't think it is. Um, <laughs> I can curl my tongue. Three. Um, I can. I can do spit bubbles. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it right now though. <laughs> so, like. Have you guys seen people like spit a bubble and it's like, it's really gross. It is not COVID friendly. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I'll try one. Oh, did you see it? it? Did it. That's <laughs> 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 so, that's four. 
<laughs> and then five, what was five? Oh, you ready? This is this is the trick I do for like three year olds. Okay, invisible string. Here we go. Oh my gosh, that one's my favorite. <laughs> Hold on, I got another one. What? Those are my that is a superhuman face trick. trick. I also everybody really wants to hear the lizard story. I just see oh, lizards no. all over the comments. Okay, it's, not, it's really not that great. Either. Okay, guys, lizard story real quick, and then we'll we'll get off. So I lived in um, Fort Myers, Florida, for five years. I love it. It's where I went to school. Um, beautiful, beautiful place to live. However, there are lizards everywhere, and I don't love them. They <laughs> just they're just crawly. They're cute from a distance, but they're just whatever. So um, I actually, I did three years kind of as a student in this, this college program that I did. And then I went on staff there for two years. And um, I was on staff actually at this point, and I'm talking to one of the students and um, I'm, we're just having a conversation. I'm wearing a longer pair of jeans. And as I'm talking to him, I just, I feel something on my leg and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh there's a bug in my pants. And I'm like talking to a student, just telling him this. I'm like, there's a bug in my pants. I have to go right now. And so I run to the bathroom. And of course, I'm just like, oh, like, like tapping my legs and just like, get it off, get it off. There's a bug in my pants, there's a bug in my pants. So I run into the bathroom, lock the door, take my pants, turn them inside out, right? And not a bug, but a lizard falls to the ground. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And so I get my pants back on real quick. I'm sitting on the sink, open up the door and I'm, and I'm, I'm like, Hey, the guy's name was Sam. I was talking to him. I'm like, Sam, Sam. He comes over like near the, near the bathroom. <laughs> and I'm like, can you get a broom and help me with that? And so he goes and he grabs a broom um, to like get this lizard. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's going to run away. Like we need to get this out of the office, whatever. And he picks it up and he's like, Abby, that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> that died in my pants. And it was just like, oh, no. oh my gosh, it was so terrible. And then, um, and then I later that night, this is the, this is maybe the worst part later that night I'm at home and I'm talking to my mom on the phone and I'm just like, Oh, I'm retelling the story. Right. And reliving it. I'm like, Oh, I feel, I just like the whole day. I just felt like things are just crawling. On. I'm like, even right now, I literally, I feel like there's things just crawling on me. And I, I look down as I'm telling the story and there is a giant spider on my chest. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> it was like one of the worst days of my life. So yes, a lizard died in my pants. That was the that cherry was on top of the dead Sorry, lizard. lizard. I did not mean to kill you, but may you rest in peace. Oh, no. All right. So it's your turn to be bold. <laughs> that story had nothing to do with anything, if you were wondering. Um, we believe in action over perfection. We also believe in you here at the Virtual Savvy. Thank you so much for joining us live today. We will be live again tomorrow at noon central time. If you've enjoyed these live streams, you're definitely going to enjoy it tomorrow because we're going to talk about the mistakes that people make, right? Um, and you do not want to make these mistakes. So uh, join us at noon central time for that live stream tomorrow. We will see you then.